ONR's noise-induced hearing loss, NIHL program, a sound investment. For years, ONR has been a pioneer in funding the research to help restore hearing loss. VA statistics show tinnitus and defective hearing claims combined are more than four times the number of claims for post-traumatic stress disorder or lower back or neck strain and more than five times the cases for musculoskeletal conditions for trauma-induced arthritis. That's why at the Office of Naval Research, ONR Program Manager Kurt Yankaskis is working with an impressive set of research partners to repair hearing loss and prevent its occurrence for warfighters of the future. What is the best strategy to give them full protection so that when they're done with their service career that they come back 100%? A sudden intense noise like an improvised explosive device or IED or sustained exposure to higher than normal decibel levels can inflict damage on a sailor or marine's hearing organs without ever causing pain or leaving signs of physical injury. A sound wave travels through the ear canals and reaches the cochlea via the middle ear. In the cochlea, the sound wave is transformed into electrical pulses which travel down the nerves to the brain. Then the sound is processed. Hearing skills are a critical warfighting component Hearing allows us to detect threats that are behind us, also allows us to localize where things are, and both verbal and nonverbal uh, communication. By using hearing protection, earplugs, sometimes people feel like they don't get that situational awareness. With good hearing, a warfighter can identify a target in 40 seconds. With poor hearing, then time more than doubles. With good hearing, only 1% of gunners will hear an incorrect command. With poor hearing, the figure soars to 37 percent. With good hearing, 94 percent of enemy's targets are killed versus 41 percent with poor hearing. And these are only a few examples of why good hearing is so important to the warfighter. Commander Royce Clifford, MD, Marine Aircraft Group 39 surgeon, has studied the problem in depth. Commander Clifford talked about three common types of noise exposure. Number one, chronic noise that uh, sailors are exposed to, which is unique in the military. Um, number two, the pressure waves that um, Marines and soldiers are, are exposed to uh, in war zones. Uh, and number three, artillery, essentially, um, which people can anticipate, but it's, it's louder than you can imagine. ONR's goals are to prevent hearing loss by reducing noise in living and working spaces and eventually to reduce other jet-related and industrial-related noises at their source. ONR-sponsored research at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital has been focused on understanding the mechanism of hearing and hearing loss. We have been specifically focused on uh, ways to regenerate the sensory cells in the ear. Principal investigator Jonathan Kill is co-founder and CEO of Sound Pharmaceuticals in Seattle, also principal investigator on two current ONR awards for research and development. One is targeted to help regenerate auditory hair cells. We're looking at restoring auditory function or hearing to people who have lost hearing in a very significant way. They're beyond hearing aids and candidates for cochlear implantation. What we're trying to do is replace something that's the size of a pea with 40,000 moving parts and that's the challenge. Kurt Yankaska sees the future for hearing protection not only with a custom molded earplug, but one outfitted with talk through circuitry. That's smart enough to know when I have a voice command and I need to hear that and then shut down when it sees an explosive event. We're not going to leave a generation uh, of sailors and marines that have lost their hearing as, as a result of the good work that they do.